Hey everyone at home or wherever you happen to be, I'm Miss Jamie and welcome back to another Art Explorations for Kids. So today we're going to be drawing an owl and we're going to be taking a more stylistic approach. So by stylized, what I mean is taking what we see and then creating something that is more representational as opposed to a photograph type um, illustration. So we're going to start off with our Jumbo Jet black pencil. So what I want you to do is just start by drawing an oval very lightly, not quite in the middle of your paper, just a little bit above the middle. And then you're going to come down on the left side here and come up to the middle and come back down like you're drawing a W up on the right side. And now we're going to create the little owl ear flaps, little feather flaps that you see. We're going to come up, create a triangle type shape, and then repeat that on the right side. And then we're going to come to the middle of the left triangle and draw a curve down to the middle here. And like you're doing an M, coming up on the right side. Now we're gonna put the beak in. We're just gonna come in and do a V. And curve the beak at the top there. Now we're gonna come in and draw the front part of the ear, just creating kind of a little wavy line, and then another little wavy line over here. And what you want to do is start making circles in the middle, and circles in the middle on the right over here, and then the actual eye, another circle. and repeat that on the right. And then we're going to create the pupil of the eye and create a little highlight here, which is another circle. And repeat that on the right side and create our little highlight here. And now we're gonna make the body so we're just going to come in from the left over here and create a nice round body. And then we want to give him his chest feathers. So we're going to repeat that same shape, just a little smaller on the inside. And we're going to come in and give him some little toes so he can grab onto the branch. We're just going to make little curving shapes for toes down at the bottom. And then we're going to give him some cute wide flappy wings. I'm just going to curve out and down like a leaf and up and around. All right. So now we're going to create a stylistic type branch. We're not going to try to create the whole tree here. So from the bottom uh, left corner of his toes, going to create a little swiggle here that's just going to be uh, reminiscent of a branch and come across the bottom. And I'm gonna make my branch go up here. You can create your branch any way you want. 
It doesn't have to have a little branch coming up here on the right off of the main branch. You could have other branches coming up if you'd like, but you're not trying to create a detailed, realistic branch, just something that's more of a design, a motif to go with your little owl. And I'm gonna add some leaves in here. They're just like raindrop shapes. And you can add more leaves if you like, but I'm gonna stick with three. And since I really like this composition, I'm gonna go ahead and pick a color to outline my owl in with our Tombow markers. So I'm gonna do the dark purple, I think, since I'm gonna be doing my owls in mostly blues and purples. And I'm gonna use the brush end just so I can get a nice thick line. Remember that these also have a finer tip end, but we're not gonna be using that one today. So now we're going to go ahead and outline our main lines, and we're gonna go in and erase the extra lines that we have that we've created as guidelines. So I'm gonna start by outlining the head. We've made these nice round shapes here for the cheeks. We're gonna get his little head feathers in. And notice how I'm holding the pin like this and not straight down like this so that way we get a thicker line and we're also not damaging our brush. So now we have our owl completely outlined, and you can see that he's cute, cartoony, uh, stylized. He's not completely realistic, photorealistic, something you would see um, on a nature show. And a good way to think of stylized is maybe you have a favorite stuffed animal, say a teddy bear or a lion, and you look at that, and then you look at an actual picture of a real bear or a lion and you can see how stylized your stuffed animal is compared to the real thing. Um, so now that we've completely got the outline, we're going to go ahead and erase all these extra little lines that we have here just to clean up our picture. And these were just the guidelines, so we want to get them out of the way. Okay, so we've erased our lines and we have all these shavings and we're just going to go ahead and tap our paper like this, get the shavings off. Any excess, just lightly brush that away. All right? So now we're going to move on to our Cezanne color pencils and go ahead and color in our owl. You can pick out the colors that you want beforehand. Um, which is what I've done and you don't have to use the same color scheme as I am but I've decided that I want to do my owl in these purples blues and I've picked out a purple for the branch and my green for the leaves but if you do want to use the exact same colors that I'm using we're gonna go ahead and put a list up on the screen so that you can pick them out of your Cezanne uh, set and color in along with me So I'm going to start on the outside of the eye 
And notice that I'm going in the same direction as I'm coloring. And that's just so I can get a nice even coverage and a nice clean look. I'm not going every which way and creating something um, that looks chaotic. And notice how I'm holding my color pencil in order to get the most coverage with my color pencil. So remember we just want to hold this at an angle like we did the marker and this way we get the wide side here of the lead as opposed to just creating a single line if it were straight down. So now we have our completed owl. He's fully colored in, and you can see that he's got this nice graphic look to him. So if you're happy with your owl how he is, we're gonna go ahead and stop the beginner lesson right here. And if you would like to continue on and add a little bit more detail, then just stick around and we're gonna start the advanced lesson in just a second. So welcome back for the advanced portion of our owl lesson. And what we're gonna focus on now is our background. So when you see things in real life, you'll notice that things that are, are objects that are closer to us are sharper, which means you can see everything in more detail. Things that are close are more defined. You can see the lines um, more clearly. And then things that are farther in the background, you might notice are a little bit out of focus. They're not quite as clear. You can't see as many details. So that's what we're gonna focus on in our background. We're just gonna take some of these pastels here, our soft pastels, and we're going to create the illusion of a leafy background, the rest of the trees that are behind this owl. And so I'm going to take our three greens and 
and this is the chromium oxide green, our dark yellowish olive green, and our light leaf green. And I'm going to start off with the brightest one, the light leaf green. And I'm just going to add some color up here in the corner. And using a soft circular motion, I don't want to press down too hard. I'm just going to get some of the pastel on the paper because we're going to smudge it in a second and have a lot of fun with that. And you can make this splotch a pastel whatever shape you want because again we're gonna get our fingers in here in a minute and mush it all together I'm gonna take a spot over here and add some of this green and I think I'm gonna bring some of this bright green down here bring a little over here on the left side. And now I'm going to take the dark yellowish olive green. I'm going to do the same thing and just pick out a few spots to add this pastel down on our Bristol paper. Finally, I'm going to take our chromium oxide green and fill in what we have left here. And remember to pay attention to where you're placing your fingers on your paper because these are really messy. If you need to hold your paper to make sure that it's not sliding around, make sure you just use your fingertips and try to avoid as much of the pastel as possible. Now that we're done coloring in the background with our pastels for the fun part, we're going to go ahead and just use two fingers and just go ahead and smudge our pastel into the bristol. You'll see that I'm doing circular motions again just like when we added the pastel onto the paper and I'm blending each color into the other. And you're gonna carefully work around your owl. Make sure that you don't end up getting pastel inside what you've already colored in your owl. You can switch to one finger when you need to get closer in and get more detailed and into those uh, corners. So you're going to notice that once you've been going for a little while blending in your color, you're going to start having your pastel make little piles of dust 
and you're gonna wanna go ahead and get that off before you continue throughout the whole picture. So once you've blended in a few sections, you're gonna wanna go ahead and take your picture very carefully, grabbing the sides, and take it over to the trash can and just gently shake it off. Get that excess powder off. And then keep going. Okay, so now that we're done working on our background, you can see that we have all of these beautiful blended sections together and this nice, soft, fuzzy background that gives us the illusion that there's a tree in the background. We have darker areas, lighter areas, as if the light was coming in through the tree. And you'll also notice that our fingers are quite messy, so before you do anything, touch anything, make sure that you go to the sink and wash these off. And we are done and ready to frame our owl. So thank you so much for following along with me. I hope you guys had a hoot. And I can't wait to see you guys on the next Art Explorations for Kids.